Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar on Amazon SageMaker. If you have questions during the session, you can submit them in the questions pane on the control panel and I will answer the questions at the end. You will also find a copy of the slides in the handout tab on the control panel and you will receive a copy of the recording in a follow-up email shortly after the event. All right, let's get started. This webinar focuses on Amazon SageMaker, uh, a managed service for machine learning. And uh, I guess the first thing would be to explain why we uh, build this service. As you probably know if you're doing machine learning today, machine learning workflows are quite complex. They involve many different steps from data preparation to building and experimenting uh, your first models to training and tuning models and of course and that's probably the hardest part, uh, deploying and managing models in production. Uh, so customers who uh, work with machine learning today use a, a collection of tools to do this, uh, some uh, off-the-shelf tools, some bespoke tools, and um, it's not so easy to have a smooth um, a transition from experimentation all the way to production. So this is why we built SageMaker, to make this process simpler, faster, and to help customers deliver high performance models in production quicker. Um, SageMaker was released um, a few years ago already and over time we added lots of new capabilities and I will try to cover as many as possible in this session and uh, we'll dive deeper into some of these capabilities in later sessions today. Um, so SageMaker is a modular service that uh, um, aims at covering the the full scope of, uh, of a machine learning project, um, collecting, uh, annotating data, uh, preparing training data, uh, and we'll see uh, uh, which services let you do that. Then um, we have a collection of uh, built-in algos and built-in frameworks that are available off the shelf uh, to help you quickly experiment with your data, try to find uh, the, uh, the algorithm that uh, fits your data best. And then, of course, um, we have a collection of features and APIs to train, debug, optimize models, compare your many uh, different experiments uh, so that you can, again, quickly find high-performance models and then move on to deploying them in production. So they could be deployed in different ways to uh, real-time endpoints or for batch processing. And uh, we have monitoring capabilities uh, and uh, scaling capabilities as well. And really, um, um, I want to underline the fact that um, SageMaker is a modular service. So some customers find that, you know, they want to use the whole uh, the whole spectrum of capabilities and uh, and to make this uh, uh, even simpler we uh, launched at reinvent Amazon SageMaker Studio which is a web-based IDE for machine learning that uh, kind of uh, 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 includes all these capabilities and, and makes uh, them uh, really simple to use but some other customers uh, have more specific needs. Maybe they want to train on AWS, on SageMaker, and deploy uh, on their own infrastructure. Maybe they have existing models that they want to import to SageMaker and then uh, deploy on AWS. You know, whatever fits your project uh, is fine. So you can just pick the, the APIs and the capabilities that you need and use only those, right? It's not a silo that... Uh, uh, traps you into w just one way of doing things. Okay, so let's talk about data preparation. Um, data preparation is actually a, a very, very time intensive uh, task. And uh, here's an example where uh, we see what it takes to annotate images for a computer vision problem, probably an, an autonomous driving uh, problem here. So on the left, we have the, the raw images, and on the right, we have the annotated images. And uh, this is called semantic segmentation, where you have to assign each pixel in the image to a specific instance. Okay, so uh, uh, the, the greenish uh, stuff is a moving car, and, uh, and the yellowish uh, stuff is vegetation, etc., etc. Okay, and you have to do this for every single picture. So even if you had nice graphical tools, imagine how long it would take to do this. 
and uh, for one one picture and then multiply that number by you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of pictures so clearly this is a really really time intensive task and the same goes for annotating text uh, if you have to annotate uh, annotate text file for entity extraction you know it takes a lot of time and those data sets tend to be huge too uh, to help customers with this, uh, we launched uh, a capability called SageMaker Ground Truth, which basically lets you annotate um, your data sets at scale quickly and, uh, and efficiently. Um, so the, the first step would be to uh, upload your data set in S3, and then you would create a workforce. Uh, so uh, that could be a private workforce, people from your own company who have uh, domain uh, knowledge and can, uh, can annotate that data. It could be a third party workforce. Uh, we have a, a number of partner companies who can help you with that. And uh, if you really need to scale, uh, you can uh, use Amazon Mechanical Turk and, uh, and scale to tens of thousands or maybe hundreds of thousands of uh, human laborers. Um, but it's not just about human labeling data. You can use a capability called active learning where um, in parallel to human labelers, a machine learning model is automatically trained on annotated data. And when the, um, the accuracy of that model exceeds human labelers, then the model starts labeling at scale. So, you know, if you have uh, you know, one million images, uh, maybe, uh, maybe human laborers need to do, I don't know, 10, 20% of that. And then the, the rest will be automatically labeled by the model. Okay, so that's a great way to speed up annotation and of course, save money as well. Uh, we have a number of workflows. You can annotate images, you can animate, annotate text, and you can build custom workflows. So this is a pretty, uh, a pretty fun service. Let me quickly show you a really, uh, what it looks like. Um, so um, you'll find ground truth in the uh, in the SageMaker console, and you know you can uh, you can define data sets. So basically, upload uh, data to S3, and here's a, a silly example that I've uh, uploaded. Okay, some heavy metal <laughs> guitarists, and uh, and then you build a workforce. So you can build a mechanical Turk workforce or private workforce or vendor workforce. Okay, so the steps are slightly different, but uh, you know, in the end, uh, you will have a group of people who can log in to, uh, to labeling um, a console where they will see those samples and using uh, nice graphical tools with your uh, instructions, they can start labeling, okay? And once the job is complete, uh, then you will find the annotated uh, data set in S3. So here are some examples that I, I did myself, okay, for sem uh, semantic segmentation. And uh, you can view them in the console. And of course, you have this annotation information in a manifest file in S3. Okay, so then you can grab that annotation information and feed it to your uh, uh, machine learning algorithm, in this case, uh, your computer vision algorithm. So um, if you want to know more about Ground Truth, I, I actually have a, uh, an end-to-end -end demo uh, on my YouTube channel, and uh, I'll, I'll provide you with the URL on the final slide, okay? So this is Ground Truth. Um, another way to um, prepare data is just to run um, um, processing jobs. Um, so maybe you need to run uh, feature engineering or, or uh, ETL tasks or cleaning task you know data is always a, always messy real life data is it's not perfect so it needs to be cleaned uh, and uh, and customers use um, primarily scikit-learn and and spark to do that as we found out so to make their life a little simpler we added a capability to SageMaker called SageMaker processing which makes it very very easy to run um, batch processing jobs on SageMaker using either uh, scikit-learn or spark and, uh, and this is really just, uh, you know, a, a, again, a time saver. You don't have to go and, and build a framework to run those jobs. You can just provide your own code and, uh, and use uh, our own containers for processing or bring your own containers if you want to. So uh, pretty, pretty nice capability here. Okay, so once you have a data set, once it's ready, then uh, you can start building models. 
So the first step, I suppose, would be to uh, start inspecting data, start running preliminary uh, analysis on that. And the, the preferred way to do this today is to use Jupyter Notebooks. So you could absolutely run your own Jupyter server or even run Jupyter on your own machine and, uh, and, and use SageMaker APIs. But again, to make your life a little simpler, we built uh, SageMaker Notebook instances, which are managed instances, uh, pre-installed with everything you need, Jupyter and Conda environments for popular libraries. Uh, and of course, uh, a, a lot of uh, security features. You can run them inside your VPCs. You can encrypt storage, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you can literally get to work in minutes. Just fire one up, um, clone your uh, repo, and and just start running your notebooks. Um, these go from really really tiny, you know, T2 medium to really really big ones, uh, P3, 16 XL. Uh, having said that, um, we don't recommend that you run very heavy uh, workloads on notebook instances. These are really meant for experimentation. And uh, if you need to train and, uh, and process data at scale, then we, uh, we recommend that you do this on uh, fully managed infrastructure, as we will see in a minute. But if you need uh, a large GPU instance for experimentation, OK, well, it's available here. Uh, recently at reInvent, we announced Amazon SageMaker Studio, uh, which is uh, still in preview. I'll show it to you uh, in the demo. And as I've said before, it's, uh, it's an integrated environment for machine learning. So uh, it's based on uh, JupyterLab, so it's very, uh, it sounds uh, and looks very familiar. And, um, and you can run your notebooks and manage your experiments. Um, it's integrated with uh, SageMaker Autopilot or AutoML capability, which uh, I will uh, dive deep into uh, in one of the uh, later sessions today. Uh, and, and generally, it's a, it's a fast and, and easy way to have all your uh, machine learning workflow on a single pane of glass. So pretty nice. Still in preview. It's only available in the uh, US East 2 region at the time of recording. Um, and um, and this is what it looks like. So um, nice uh, dark theme for for Jupiter, and you can run your notebooks and you can uh, compare experiments. Uh, you can build visualization using all the model training uh, parameters and metrics, etc. So um, again, I, I guess a, a nice way to uh, to experiment with your data. When it comes to actually training, um, we have a number of options. So the first one um, is to take a look at the AWS Marketplace for machine learning. So the AWS Marketplace for machine learning is a collection of algorithms and models that have been designed by uh, AWS partners and vetted by AWS. So um, the reason why I, I think you should look at this one first is because you might find a model that solves your problem exactly uh, or pretty close or close enough to get your uh, uh, proof of concept going while you work on the, uh, on your, the final model. Uh, so go and, and take a look. You can deploy those models in just a few clicks on SageMaker. Some of them are free. Some of them are free for a while. Uh, some of them our, uh, our, our commercial models. Uh, anyway, take a look and, uh, and start experimenting in, uh, in, in no time. The other option is to use SageMaker Autopilot, which again is one of those newer capabilities from reInvent. Um, again, I will dive into Autopilot later today. So uh, I'm, I'm just going to say, um, you can literally build uh, a machine learning model with zero code, okay? Uh, especially if you use Studio, there's a, there's a UI workflow that lets you upload your data and, and fire, fire up the, the autopilot job without writing a line of code, okay? So um, I'll, I'll show you that uh, later today. So that's a nice option uh, if you really don't want to write uh, machine learning code. Now, if you have a more specific uh, problem, then uh, of course you need to select um, an algo and maybe provide your own code. Okay, so the next uh, option is to look at built-in algorithms. Uh, we have 17 built-in algos. These are available off the shelf in SageMaker, so you don't need to write machine learning code. You need to write code that just selects 
the, the right algo, defines the location of data, and gets training going. Okay, and we'll see again examples of that uh, later today. Uh, you find here um, statistical machine learning algorithms and, and some deep learning algorithms as well. Um, if you are uh, using one of the uh, nice open source frameworks like uh, PyTorch or TensorFlow, then these are supported as well. And uh, all you have to do is bring your own code. And I'll show you in the demo in this session how to use uh, Keras and, and TensorFlow. So take existing Keras code and, uh, and run it in the built-in TensorFlow environment. Okay. And finally, if you need something else, if you use R or C++ or you have custom Python or whatnot, of course, you can run it on SageMaker as well. Um, you need to build your own container for uh, uh, storing your training code and your uh, prediction code, and you can uh, uh, train and deploy on SageMaker as well. So I guess, uh, you know, you can literally run anything on SageMaker, um, but again, um, I, I would highly recommend that you look at the marketplace first. Maybe you just save yourself from a, a six-month machine learning project. Uh, and, and then uh, if there, that doesn't work for you, then you can consider the other options. Okay. Uh, the, the common ground here is that uh, whatever you do, all your training will run on fully managed infrastructure. So you will never have to manage a single server. And, uh, and you can use spot instances, um, which is a great, great way to optimize your training costs. Okay, so you can focus on the machine learning problem and you can pretty much ignore all the infrastructure concerns. So here's the list of built-in algos. Uh, the color code here is uh, orange is uh, supervised learning and yellow is unsupervised. So as I've said, um, you can see the the usual suspects of uh, statistical machine learning are here, linear regression and factorization machines and KNN, uh, k-means, PCA, etc. Uh, and, uh, and then we have some deep learning algos for computer vision and we have some NLP algos as well and, and some uh, more exotic stuff for time series. Okay, so these are all very nice. Um, just grab uh, grab them and uh, and you know send them data and you're on your way no machine learning coding required if you use built-in frameworks then um, uh, again you don't have to build those environments so uh, you can use the built-in container for tensorflow and the built-in container for pytorch these are actually open source containers uh, so you can go and grab the the container definitions on the uh, uh, GitHub, uh, you can build them, run them, customize them, uh, do anything that you like. Uh, you can use local mode, which is a way to train and predict with that container on your local machine. So the local machine could be uh, a notebook instance or it could be your your laptop um, versus you know training on managed infrastructure. So of course, this is not going to be as fast and scalable and uh, as uh, using uh, large instances on AWS and distributed training and so on. But when you're experimenting at small scale, it's a very convenient way to iterate quickly. Okay, and uh, I'll show you how to run local mode. It's very easy. And I'll, uh, another feature is script mode, where you can um, take existing framework code and with very, very minimal changes, you can run it inside one of those containers. So. There is no learning curve here. I mean, there's nothing you need to worry about if you have existing TensorFlow or PyTorch code and you want to train it on SageMaker. I mean, you can adapt it in five minutes and, uh, and I'll show you how to do that. I mentioned Autopilot. Again, uh, we'll cover this uh, in, in another session today, but in a nutshell, this is an, a white box AutoML service that can uh, train um, classification and regression models. The only thing you have to do is upload your data in S3 and, uh, and Autopilot takes it from there. It will automatically figure out which problem you're trying to solve. It will uh, come up with feature engineering and, and data processing steps. It will identify candidate uh, algorithms and then it's going to launch training jobs and tuning jobs to give you the best uh, performance. And you can also see what's happening there. That's why uh, I'm calling it white box AutoML because Autopilot will generate notebooks that show you uh, 
what are the processing pipelines and what are the training pipelines. So you can actually run that code in a notebook and uh, reproduce the, the, the work that Autopilot did. And you can keep tweaking if you want to. So it, it's pretty nice. So if you're interested in AutoML, don't miss that session. Okay, so once you have a model and, and you find a model that fits your, your problem, it's time to train uh, probably at scale and then optimize. So how do you do that? How do you actually work with uh, SageMaker? So SageMaker is, um, is based on a Python SDK, which we call the SageMaker SDK. And it's very easy to, to learn. It's a very high level, as you will see. You don't really deal with uh, infrastructure objects at all. You deal with uh, algos and training jobs and deployment jobs. So you really focus on the machine learning workflow here and not at all on infrastructure. There's also a Spark SDK, uh, which I won't cover today, but uh, feel free to ask me questions, where you can um, uh, invoke SageMaker APIs from Spark applications. And, uh, and I think Spark for ETL and SageMaker for machine learning uh, are a great, uh, a great combo. Um, so no time to cover this today, but again, ask me questions if you like. Uh, of course, you also find um, service level APIs, just like you would find uh, S3 APIs, EC2 APIs. You have SageMaker APIs, uh, which are low level APIs. Uh, so these are uh, great for scripting and automation. Uh, and, and if you want to uh, finally and tightly control your uh, VPC configuration and so on, these are the, the right uh, APIs, but um, for for machine learning work and experimentation work, um, you should absolutely use the Python SDK, not the AWS SDK. And we added uh, another capability uh, on top of the uh, on top of the training and deployment API at reInvent, and this is called SageMaker Experiments. Uh, SageMaker Experiments is um, um, a way to organize and track and compare all your many um, experiments because over time you will end up training hundreds, maybe thousands, tens of thousands of models. Okay. And of course you want to compare them. You want to find if, you know, changing this training parameter at, a, at an influence and, and, and there's no better way than to uh, uh, visualize everything. So uh, um, this is exactly what experiments does. It lets you track all your uh, uh, training uh, and all your job metrics and organize them and compare them okay uh, and and we'll see that again in uh, in the later sessions today when it comes to optimizing uh, models uh, optimizing the uh, the the accuracy if that's the metric that you selected um, SageMaker support automatic model tuning Okay, which we will again cover in detail in a future session today. So automatic model tuning is, uh, is a clever way to quickly figure out which hyperparameters uh, deliver the high performance model. Okay, and well, you could say, well, you know, I can tweak, I can do it myself. Um, but, uh, you know, as it turns out, this is a really <laughs> difficult task and, and, and guessing at, at random is not uh, a, a really good way here. So uh, um, automatic model tuning actually uses machine learning algorithms to find the best parameters for your training job. And it will quickly converge to high performance models. Okay, more in a later session today. Um, another capability that was added as reInvent is uh, SageMaker Debugger. So SageMaker Debugger um, lets you do two things. It lets you um, inspect uh, model state so you can easily capture model state during training um, so any uh, model parameter or model metric can be easily captured and stored in s3 okay uh, and then uh, there's an sdk to load that data and explore it uh, and and visualize it etc etc okay so you can understand what's going on inside your model um, and the second thing that debugger does is uh, it lets you configure uh, debugging rules that will uh, um, uh, try to identify unwanted conditions 
that happened during training. So while a training job is running, debugger will look for you know uh, loss not decreasing or um, um, exploding gradients or vanishing gradients or uh, all kinds of uh, of uh, really really bad problems that will pretty much um, make your training job unusable, and it will alert you if uh, such a condition is detected. You can also implement your own custom rules if you want. If you want to inspect model state in specific way, uh, that's that's possible as well. Okay, uh, so that's debugger, and uh, and we'll take a look uh, later today. So what about uh, deploying and managing models? Um, so once you have a model that you really like, um, that performs uh, accordingly to expectations and that uh, answers your business question uh, properly, then of course you want to deploy it and manage it in production. So let's look at the options here. So models are stored in S3 uh, and you can deploy them in different ways. So um, the first one is to deploy to a real-time endpoint. And this is literally one line of code, right? Uh, don't take my word for it. You'll see that in the demo in a few minutes. So this will create a fully managed HTTPS endpoint backed by at least one fully managed instance, but uh, you, can, you can have several and you can even implement auto-scaling on that endpoint. And then you can simply post uh, data to that HTTPS endpoint and receive predictions. Okay, and it is a vanilla endpoint, so you can use any tool or any language to invoke it. Of course, there's a, a simple API in the SageMaker SDK called Predict, but uh, you could use anything else, right? So that's that's one way of doing it. The second way is to use batch transform. Uh, so some customers don't really care for real-time prediction. They don't need it. Maybe they need to predict, you know, 10 gigabytes of data every week uh, and, and uh, once a week, and that's all they need. Um, so pushing that to an HTTPS endpoint wouldn't make much sense. So you can take a model and again, one line of code will let you transform uh, a data set in S3 um, into predictions also in S3, and uh, and all that all of that is is fully managed as well. If you don't want to deploy on SageMaker, let's say you want to deploy on container services, uh, ECS, EKS, Fargate, or maybe your own Docker cluster on, on EC2, why not? Um, this is uh, this is pretty easy as well. Uh, the, like I said, the model is in S3, so you could you could grab let's say your TensorFlow model here. And, um, and load it in uh, the TensorFlow uh, AWS deep learning container or use your own container if that's your thing and just run it on, uh, on a container service. Okay, all those models are vanilla models. So if you train with TensorFlow, what you get is a TensorFlow model. If you train with XJBoost, what you get is an XJBoost model. So you can just copy it from S3 into your favorite container and deploy it anywhere. Okay, uh, anything else works. Uh, so uh, like I said, you can just grab the model in S3 and run. Uh, if you want to deploy it on your laptop or an EC2 instance on, uh, uh, on the server in the closet, I mean, that's fine, right? Uh, we believe in freedom. So you just pick uh, whatever option works best for you, okay? So um, the difference here is, of course, if you use endpoints or batch transform, it is only one line of code. It is fully managed, um, and uh, and you know uh, scaling and monitoring, logging is included. If you do it uh, the uh, another way, then you have to take care of that. Okay. An extra capability that we added at reInvent is uh, SageMaker Model Monitor, um, and Monitor lets you do two things. Again, another really really cool uh, productivity uh, service. So the first one is capturing uh, data automatically. Okay, so with uh, just a few lines of code, you can capture all data sent to your uh, endpoint and capture predictions as well. Uh, and that gets saved in S3. So that's already very useful because if you want to uh, look at uh, data and predictions and run further analytics on that, um, it, it's uh, um, that's all it takes, right? 
Uh, and the second thing that uh, model monitor does, it, it will uh, build a baseline from your training data set and it will compare incoming data uh, with that baseline. So if your incoming data starts drifting or, or really starts looking different from the training data set, well, it's going to figure it out and it's going to alert you with uh, anomaly uh, reportings. Um, okay, and uh, this could be missing features or mistyped features or, or uh, you know, drifting statistical properties in your features that, of course, would have an impact on the quality of your predictions. And these are really, really hard problems to solve. Uh, and um, and model monitor makes it pretty easy to to um, to set up that kind of monitoring and uh, and get alerts. Okay, and I'll show you uh, I'll show you a detailed example later today. All right, so as you can see, there's really tons of stuff here on, uh, on SageMaker. So let's run a demo, and uh, I'm going to run a, a simple demo to really try to highlight the, the basic workflow. And as I've said many times already, um, later today, we're going to dive into uh, all the other capabilities, autopilot and uh, model tuning and debugger and model monitor, etc. Okay, so let's sh move to the demo now. All right, so well, this is SageMaker Studio, okay, um, and uh, yeah, it can go full screen. This is SageMaker Studio, and uh, you can launch um, different notebooks if you want. You can create, you can open a terminal, and I already cloned my repo here, okay, so I see, uh, I see all my files are available here. I see running notebooks and here I see the different experiments that I've already run. Okay. And here I see, well, I've got an endpoint running, etc., etc. Okay. So what notebook are we running here? Um, so here I'm going to use uh, TensorFlow 2.0 and I'm actually going to use the Keras API to build uh, an image classifier. Okay, so it's a convolutional neural network um, that tries to classify the fashion MNIST data set. So if you're not familiar with fashion MNIST, this is what it looks like. So it's, uh, it's a drop-in replacement for MNIST, which I'm sure you've seen, those are uh, digits from zero to nine. Well, I guess we're all tired of the digits. So uh, fashion MNIST is basically uh, the same thing, same number of samples, same image size, but this time we deal with uh, uh, fashion articles, okay? Uh, and again, it's a drop-in replacement. So any, any MNIST code can work with this. And of course, this is a more interesting data set than digits, okay? So the game here will be try to classify those images in the right class, okay? So first of all, of course, I update my SDKs. Uh, import the SageMaker SDK, download the Fashion MNIST dataset, uh, which is a, one of the standard datasets in Keras. So that's pretty easy. It's already split between training and validation. All right, nothing uh, strange here. Okay, um, and what am I going to do with this? Where's my script? Okay, so let's look at my actual Keras code. Okay, so this is uh, a vanilla uh, Keras code uh, for TensorFlow 2.0. And as you can see, I'm creating a pretty simple convolutional model. Okay, if you, uh, <laughs> if you survived the uh, intro to deep learning, you know a little bit about that. Uh, so convolutional block uh, uh, and then a dense uh, layer classifying images into the 10 classes, okay? So this is my model here. Uh, and then um, what am I going to do? Let's ignore those parameters for a second. We'll get back to that. Uh, well, we're going to load the data set, do very basic processing, uh, normalizing pixel values and uh, creating batches, etc., etc. Then creating the model compiling, training, and saving the model. 
Okay, so this is as simple as it gets, I think. Now, what about that part here? Okay, remember I mentioned script mode. Well, this is it. So script mode is how SageMaker is going to invoke my code inside the TensorFlow container. And it's going to run it just like a Python script. So Python mnist.py with parameters, okay? So the, the, the one thing I need to take care of is make sure that um, hyperparameters are passed as command line arguments. Okay, so when I configure my training job, I'm going to pass hyperparameters like the number of epochs or learning rate, and these will actually get passed to the training script on the command line. Okay, so I need to have those set up. Uh, the second thing I need to do is uh, read those environment variables that tell me where uh, the training set is, where the validation set is, where to save the model, and how many GPUs I have on this machine. And these environment variables are set inside the SageMaker container, okay? And the last thing is, of course, saving the model in the right place, okay? So when I said you can adapt your code, your existing framework code to script mode in five minutes, I don't think I uh, exaggerate it, right? It's, it, that's all it takes. So any framework code will run in SageMaker provided that you do this, okay? All right, so now that we have our code, well, the next step is to upload the data set to S3, okay? Uh, nothing complicated here. I use a, a default bucket that's provided for me, and then I can configure my training job, okay? So I use the TensorFlow estimator from the SageMaker SDK. Uh, you would have a PyTorch estimator for PyTorch and an MXNet estimator for MXNet, etc. And the first parameter is my training script, okay, the one we just looked at. Uh, then I need to pass an IAM role because, of course, SageMaker needs permission uh, to uh, access S3 and uh, pool containers and etc, etc. Okay, so you can use the default role that was created for SageMaker. Then I'm going to ask uh, for that run to uh, for that training job to run on uh, one MLP32 Excel instance. That's a GPU instance, and that's all there is to it when it comes to infrastructure. I don't need to look at anything else, right? Um, if I wanted to uh, train on five instances, I would just say, "Hey, give me five instances," and that's it, right? That's as much infrastructure work as you're gonna do with SageMaker. Uh, I'm going to specify the TensorFlow version, so 2.0, use Python 3, use script mode, uh, and then pass just one hyperparameter, just train for 10 epochs. Okay, so this hyperparameter will actually get passed to my training script as we, uh, as we saw in the code. Okay, and then I simply call fit with the location of the training set and the validation set in S3. Okay, those... Uh, two uh, locations here. And so now we see the training log and uh, well, it's going to create that uh, P3 instance. It's going to pull the TensorFlow container to it. It's going to uh, copy my data set to the instance and it's going to uh, inject my code inside a container and then it fires everything up, okay? So we see all the environment here and this is the interesting bit, okay? Uh, we see that my code is actually invoked just like a script. That's the actual command that's running inside a container. Okay, so now you see why it's important that you pass hyperparameters and, uh, and model directory uh, as command line arguments. Okay. Okay, so now we have the training log. That's not fascinating, so we can skip it. All right. <laughs> Here we are. Okay, and uh, we achieved 91.7 validation accuracy, which is not great, but all right. Well, it, I'm not trying to set a new record here. Um, and I guess we could do better with model tuning and so on, but okay, 90, about 92%. We trained for 469 seconds, 
and we're billed for 469 seconds. Okay, so you only get billed for uh, the amount of time uh, that the training lasted. And that GPU instance shuts down automatically, so you will never overpay for training. Uh, you will never leave training infrastructure running for no good reason. Uh, I'll show you later today how to use spot instances and save tons of money on training. Okay. Now let's deploy that model. So uh, we can create a unique endpoint name and call deploy to deploy the model we trained. And once again, we uh, just say, hey, why don't you deploy this to an M4 Excel instance? And after a few minutes, I have this API uh, ready. And if I look at the SageMaker console, I should see it here. Yes, that's the one. Okay, and that's the API. That's the actual URL. Okay, so if you want to use your Java app or your uh, uh, Node.js app, whatever you use to send predictions, this is the URL you would use. Okay. So I'm going to keep using the SageMaker SDK. I'm going to call the predict API, right? As we can see here. And, uh, and this is a TensorFlow uh, model. So I need to make sure my prediction request has the uh, TensorFlow format. It's actually TensorFlow serving that we're using here. So we need, to, uh, we need to make sure we have the right format. So what am I doing here? I'm grabbing five uh, random images from the validation data set, okay? And uh, as, a, as a, um, a NumPy array, and, uh, and I'm uh, pushing that to the endpoint using the predict API, but I'm really HTTP posting here, right? And I'm uh, printing out predictions, okay? So, well, I can see I have a mistake here because uh, this is class six and it's predicted as class zero, and the other one are the other ones are nice. Okay, let's maybe run that again. Okay. Uh, oh, we have a few mistakes. We only have ninety-two percent accuracy, and some of these images are extremely difficult. I mean, even for me, looking at them, it's not obvious what those are, right? <laughs> maybe you know better. Okay. Uh, see, here's a yeah, here's an example. So the first two are dresses, if you ask me. Uh, the third one is class six and is misclassified as class zero. So that looks like a t-shirt to me. And the last one is class zero and is misclassified as a six. So what's the, di the, the actual difference between this and this class and this class? I'm not sure. I need to look at uh, those classes in fashion and this, but you can see these are pretty difficult. Okay. So even if the human eye has trouble, uh, figuring that out then you know uh, why should a deep learning algo be much more clever okay so we would need to train further and and understand why this is not uh, correct but okay it's not too bad it's not too bad right hey five out of five okay all right you can you can run this yourself and keep playing and once you're done then well you can delete the endpoint and away it goes and you stop paying for that okay so don't forget to stop your endpoints when you're done. You can deploy them later if you need them again. Okay, so here's the, here's the basic workflow for, uh, for SageMaker. Um, grab some data, put it in S3, um, create an estimator, uh, whatever built-in algo or framework you use. Just say, hey, give me, uh, give me some infrastructure, but I don't want to know the first thing about it. Launch your training job, and then call deploy to deploy and predict using the uh, HTTPS endpoint, if that's what you deployed. So pretty straightforward, not a lot of code, and those are really not difficult APIs. You can really learn this SDK in just a few hours. All right, so uh, how do you get started? Uh, well, here are some resources. So you can actually experiment with SageMaker in the free tier. Uh, you'll, you'll be able to run very limited training, but that's an option if you just want to get a hang of the of the SDK. Uh, like I said, you can also install the SDK on your local machine and work with Jupyter on your local machine. And I have a, a YouTube video on that as well. Uh, ML.AWS is where you'll find information on all our uh, machine learning services. Um, 
description and documentation, customer stories, etc., etc. This is the actual uh, page for SageMaker, and these are the ones you should look at if you uh, want to get to work. So the SageMaker SDK, the Spark SDK, and this repo contains hundreds of uh, SageMaker notebooks showing you how to get started with built-in algos, uh, built-in frameworks, bringing your own um, autopilot, everything. I mean, it's uh, literally hundreds of notebooks. This is a really, really good resource. So I would recommend reading the SageMaker documentation first and then diving into notebooks and starting to, to run them and, and um, familiarize yourself with the SDK. And uh, last but not least, uh, my own collection of notebooks and uh, my YouTube channel where you'll find quite a lot of uh, SageMaker content and, uh, and generally AWS machine learning content. Well, that's it for this session. Again, if you have questions, uh, please ask all your questions. We're going to answer them now. And thank you very much for listening and uh, stick with me for uh, plenty more SageMaker content today. Thank you.